Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at the protectionist tariff diagram and understanding what it means in the context of international economics, of course, and how governments would use a tariff to protect their own economies from foreign competition. So here we go. This video lecture is going to take a look at the impact of a tariff on the U.S. market for wheat, both for U.S. consumers, U.S. producers of wheat, and foreign producers of wheat. The first thing I think is best to take a look at is, what, what is what's the situation before the U.S. market is opened up to uh, world producers of wheat? And what you can see is there's this dom U.S. domestic demand for wheat. There's also a U.S. supply of wheat. And as a result of this, there's an equilibrium price of PE, QE, which would result in an equilibrium price level where U.S. producers are making a nice profit and U.S. consumers are, are content with the quantity they are consuming at that price level. As a result of this, you can see that there's going to be a U.S. consumer, I'm sorry, U.S. producer revenue equal to the area of this entire box, right? Now let's imagine for a second though that the United States is interested in opening up its market to the world, uh, to world producers, and as a result of that, what's going to happen is there's going to be a dramatic drop in the price of wheat down to PW, and as a result of the drop in price, of course, there's going to be a dramatic increase in the number of consumers who are willing to purchase wheat at a price level of PW. And so while this is a big gain for U.S. consumers, you can see how if you are a producer of wheat in the United States, that the drop in price is going to push all of these suppliers, represented by this section of the supply curve, out of the marketplace. Because it's not efficient for them. They are not capable of producing wheat at these low prices. Only this, these U.S. producers or domestic producers can participate in the marketplace given the new world market price. So you can see that U.S. revenue for the producers for U.S. the revenue for U.S. producers of wheat has dropped down to this square here of PWQ1. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that with this new market opened up, that world producers therefore are making up the difference. So this is the quantity, Q2 is the quantity, and this entire area right here represents the gains by foreign producers in the, in the marketplace. So these would be total revenue, this would be revenue for foreign producers of wheat. And what you can see is it's, pretty, it's a pretty good thing here. Right? If you take a look at this consumer surplus, what happens to U.S. and the U.S. marketplace for consumers is great because this originally right here was the consumer surplus in the wheat market. But because the price has dropped so dramatically, now U.S. consumers, the U.S. consumer surplus has expanded all the way out to here. So for producers, this is a good thing. But what about all these? What about all of the U.S. producers that are now pushed out of the wheat market? What about all these people that are covered up? Where did what happened to them? Well, obviously, this this opening of the marketplace was bad for them. So the United States government might want to intervene in the marketplace, and as a result, might establish a tariff on imported wheat. That tariff will result in an increase in the price of wheat from PW to PT, and that, look what it does. Oh, it's so, it's so beautiful. Look what it does. It brings this quantity of U.S. producers back into the marketplace, right? Because at this price level, with the, with the new price level, this quantity of U.S. producers can now get back in the fold. And as a result of that, U.S. producer uh, revenue is going to increase all the way out to this area here. And also, but as a result of the increased price, of course, there's a drop in the demand. So this would be Q3. There'd be a drop in the demand for U.S. wheat, 
because these men, this many consumers here are no longer willing to pay the, the tariff price of wheat, and so they're pushed out of the marketplace. Um, so the new quantity that will actually be transacted in the market or quantity demanded in the market will be Q4. So what does that mean for, for all of us? Well, if you take a look at this, because it's a tariff and not what it results in is government revenue. So this area here is going to be representative of government revenue because of the tariff collected by the government. And you can now see that you that um, foreign uh, foreign revenue is now reduced to the area of this square here. Okay, so this is looking kind of sloppy, but you can see that the tariff has brought in all of these U.S. producers back into the marketplace, resulted in an expansion of domestic revenue for wheat. You might think that, well, you know, this, this quantity of wheat from Q3 to Q4 is still being produced by foreign producers, but don't forget, they're only getting PW because the tariff is being collected by the government. And as a result of that, foreign revenue is equal to this area here. This, is area, this area is equal to the government revenue. And this over here is lost to consumers, this, this area of consumer surplus is lost, and this is going to actually be representative of what you call dead weight loss. So this is going to be loss of welfare as a result of the tariff. Okay, so that's kind of messy, but you, and this is pretty slick, the way that uh, Jocelyn Blink has put this together. So the way that this would look, real quickly here, is this area here, try to get my colors back, this area here is going to be A plus B plus C plus H plus G. This is now uh, U.S. producer revenue, foreign revenue. I'm sorry, domestic revenue, right? This area here, I plus J, is the new revenue for foreign producers. Remember, they don't get DE. DE is going to be equivalent to this area right here, government revenue as a result of the tariff. And F over here, part F right here, this is going to be dead weight loss as a result of a drop in consumer surplus as a result of the uh, increase artificially inflated price due to the tariff. But also, there's something kind of interesting going on right here. This part C is also dead weight loss. Because this one's more obvious, right? If you take a look here at this triangle, this is a loss of consumer surplus as a result of um, only Q4 being demanded in the marketplace instead of Q2. So this is a loss of welfare. But this over here, C, represents a loss of welfare too. Uh, or dead weight loss of welfare as a result of the fact that H, this quantity from Q1 to Q3, used to be produced by more efficient foreign producers. But now it's being produced by domestic producers, but in a more inefficient way. So it's a misallocation of the world's resources. And so C ends up being uh, representative of a dead weight loss also. Okay, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.